Welcome to the video about how to prepare FRCA primary MCQ in 2023. The reason I'm making a new video is that there are major changes in the MCQ format and I've got many feedback asking how is it going to impact our revision strategy. So I am making this new video about how to prepare the new MCQ exam. Again, there are many ways to prepare the exam and today I am only sharing my personal experience. In this video, I will go through my textbook and question bank recommendation and uh, mention some exam courses available. Um, personally, I would suggest spending six months reading um, about some core textbook before practicing on question bank. A good foundation knowledge helps you prepare both the MCQ and subsequent OSCE and SOE exam. And reading and practice is the key. The reason um, I would not recommend anyone rushing to the MCQ bank is that um, foundation knowledge is very important in the exam and a very broad scope of knowledge is required. So do your revision as if you're preparing MCQ, SOE and possibly OSCE as a whole would benefit your entire exam preparation. You could also watch my videos on OSCE and SOE preparation before you start your revision. There are many anesthetic foundation knowledge textbooks. But the one that I chose um, are more exam oriented. So the first one that I would recommend is the Royal College Official E-Learning Guide, Revision Guide. And there are three of them, um, the Physiology, Pharmacology and Physics. The Physiology one is very comprehensive, well written, easy to read, um, so I would highly recommend it. The Pharmacology, um, it's very well written, but it only covers the pharmacodynamic and pharmacokinetic principles. Um, so the core anesthetic drugs um, are not covered. The physics one is also very good, but it does not cover measurements or anesthetic equipment. So you could access these revision guides on the e-learning platform or the Google Drive link on our teaching website. And here is another official exam resources that you can access, um, which is the NHS e-learning platform. If you're not working in the NHS, you have to pay and subscribe it. Inside the platform, you could find anesthesia e-learning, and there are hundreds of tutorials covering the first two years of anesthetic core training, modules by topics, and each module ends with a selection of MCQs and single best answers. In the exam preparation session, you can find a question bank. Majority of them are true false questions answered with explanations. These questions do appear in the real exam, so I highly recommend you this platform. Go register, contact the administrator and they will reply you. You could supplement pharmacology knowledge with this book, which almost covered the whole pharmacology syllabus, and some of the exam MCQ are based on this book. This book is another useful supplement book for equipment where you need to know a great variety of monitoring and measurement equipment and their principles, how do they look like. It is useful for MCQ and OSCE. I personally love this book very much. It is very easy to read and easy to digest. Although it is written in SOE format with questions and answers, the knowledge is useful for both MCQ and SOE. I read it cover to cover more than once. Just be aware that there are a few typos and mistakes inside the book, for example the labels on the diagrams. But don't worry too much, they are obvious and easy to pick up. For question bank recommendation, the official guide from the college is almost essential. It contains mock paper of the entire exam including OSCE, SOE and MCQ. It gives you the idea of the exam format and difficulty. I am sorry that there is no PDF or ebook version available. You have to buy it from the college official website. By subscribing our website, you could access our Google Drive where you can find a MCQ bank with a few hundred multiple true false and a small amount of single best answer questions. Um, but the drawback is there is no answer explanation. You can find free resources in the Anesthesia UK website. There is a huge question bank, mostly being multiple true-false. 
Um, the drawback is, again, there is no explanation to the answers. So sometimes you aren't sure why you're wrong. Therefore, um, I do not recommend spending too much time on it. There are many MCQ courses out there, but um, personally, I have no experience in joining any, any of them. There is a college official primary FRC online revision course, um, highly recommended by many trainees. It provides lectures and question bank, so personally, I think um, it might be worth it. BMJ question bank is expensive, but it's very useful. You have to pay and subscribe. You can access it with your computer or smartphone apps. Practice whenever you want. It has detailed explanations to answers. Personally, I've completed the entire question bank with 1,300 questions, and I find it very useful and close to the real exam. Past Test is another app that is very similar to BMJ, also subscription-based, with 1,200 questions and explanations. I find it slightly more difficult than the BMJ and the real exam. I've completed half of the bank. So here is the big news. I guess many of you might already know about the big change in the MCQ paper. From now on, all the multiple true false questions will be cancelled, and only single best answer question will be present, equally distributed among physiology, pharmacology, and physics. 30 questions each. So each single best answer has a lead question and five options, and no mark will be deducted on wrong answers. So many of us are asking, will the change in the MCQ paper affect our revision? Um, my personal answer would be yes and no. I will go through some of the um, single best answer with you and explain my reasons. Many candidates also ask, will the single best answer question being more clinical? Do we have to prepare clinical knowledge for it? The reason that I say yes, it will affect our revision strategy is that many of the question bank and the question exam books um, will now become irrelevant and outdated, including the bank in the e-learning platform, the Anesthesia UK website, and my Google Drive bank. There is a small amount of um, single best answer on those websites, but definitely inadequate. So you do need to practice a lot more single best answers than those websites. Um, I would therefore highly suggest you to subscribe to College MCU course, um, the BMJ, and the past to pass test question bank to practice as many as possible. So what would be the change in the contents being asked in the single best answer? So here is an example of um, single best answer question in physiology. The pH of venous blood is only slightly lower than that of the arterial blood despite the addition of large amounts of CO2 in the tissue. Which of the following is the best explanation? The answer here is E. Haldane effect. The Haldane effect describes the increased capacity of deoxyhemoglobin to carry CO2 as carbinohemoglobin to buffer hydrogen ions generated from carbonic acid. Plasma protein and CO2 um, dissolution plays a minor role in CO2, while carbonic anhydrase is essential and plays a major role, but it cannot buffer pH changes caused by the CO2. What we can see here Single best answer is a bit more difficult than the multiple true false in a way that it always asks for the best answer instead of the right answer. So carbonic anhydrate does play a role in CO2, converting carbonic acid into CO2, but the question is asking about buffering CO2 instead of buffering the hydrogen ions and converting it to CO2 for elimination. So it's not the best answer here. So let's take a look at another question about pharmacology. An asthmatic develops severe bronchospasm after administration of diclofenac. This is most likely to be caused by the production of, and the answer is B, liquid triant here, because um, anti-inflammatory drugs inhibit the COX enzyme and shunt the arachnoid axi metabolism away from the prostaglandin into liquid triant. Um, an increase in the leukotriene causes um, bronchospasm. So there is no trick in this question and it's pure about um, pharmacological knowledge. What you can see from the question is that they try to make the question being clinically relevant by mentioning a scenario. 
But by the end of the day, what they are asking is only about foundation knowledge. And let's take a look at uh, this question about physics. With patients routinely connected to a variety of electrical equipment in the operating theater, safety is paramount. Which of the following is the most important electrical safety feature of such equipment? And the answer is C, avoidance of earth leakage currents. Um, the whole rationale of electrical safety centers about avoidance of earth leakage currents. The answer A and B are true statement, but they are the subset of answer C. Again, there is more than one correct answer here, but you have to choose the best answer. So are there any questions that are pure clinical um, instead of basic knowledge? Yes, there might be a few pure clinical questions in the exam, in the MCQ paper, most of them being emergency situation. And here is an example. A 56-year-old man with an hour of chest pain presents to the ED. Blood pressure is 70 over 45, heart rate of 115, regular to palpation. On examination, he is cyanosed and his peripheries are cold and clammy. A 12 list ECG has not been performed yet. The most important immediate treatment for this patient is the answer is D, high flow oxygen, because according to the ALS guideline, resuscitation always starts with ABC, although the scenario is um, pointing to as acute coronary syndrome, we always start with ABC in resuscitation. Personally, I wouldn't worry too much about those few clinical questions. If you are a practicing anesthetist, most of these clinical questions feel like common sense on our daily practice. If you are really worried, then we could read on the quick reference handbook from the Association of Anesthetists, uh, which is about um, the anesthetic emergencies. And you could also read about the Difficult Airway Society guideline and also the UK Resuscitation Council guidelines, which also helps you prepare your OSCE station. So my final words are, most of the single best answers seem to be clinically relevant, but majority of them are still based on foundation knowledge under physiology, pharmacology, and physics. So do not panic too much about the change in MCQ format. And I would suggest you to continue the same revision strategy as in the past. Just be aware that you need to find a suitable question bank to practice on. Thank you for watching my video. If you haven't subscribed our teaching program, please click the link below and subscribe it so you can access to the MCQ and OSCE materials um, by um, subscribing our website and you will also get notified when we upload new teaching videos. Thank you very much.